especially submit to you like a couple people can do. And then I can think to myself, well, some people would think, well, I don't really like so-and-so, and and it's really hard for me to do that with so-and-so. Well, all you got to do is think that Jesus loved you enough that he died for you, and he's the only one that would. (laughs) You know, and it kind of behooves me that when, I love that word, I don't know how that comes out, but I love that word. I got to think about what I was talking about, and I tickled myself. But it it behooves me when we have these social events, when we have the church picnic or when we have fall fun day or when we have Christmas party or pastor appreciation or the women throw a men's event or the men throw the women's event and that you get so little people that want to show up to this thing. I don't care what the rumor is, I wear deodorant. And if I don't wear enough, tell me I'll wear more. And if you want, I can put cologne on. I'm, I'm not a bad person to be around. I'm really not. But this is part of the aspect of the church, is the social aspect of the church where we so, socially submit to one another. I have to move on or they're not going to let me have dinner afterwards. The Bible also talks about us emotionally submitting to one another. Emotionally submitting to one another. When Betty Davis sends to the prayer chain to Anne that her sister-in-law's cousin has a tumor on her liver, and we read it, I guarantee that most of us are going to pray. I guarantee it. But I can almost guarantee you five minutes after we pray, that's gone. It is with me. It just is. But when it's somebody I'm socially invested in, like when Ethan broke up his leg and he's got a family to help raise, I know that Ann, she financially brings in the income. But when his leg was broke, I'm telling you, my heart sunk into my boots and I was praying for that family because I could identify with him because I know him. I have conversations with him. I've had dinner with him. You emotionally connect with people that you are around or you emotionally submit to one another when you're around them. The Bible tells that we're supposed to laugh with those when they laugh and cry with those when they cry. We're supposed to do that. And it makes it a whole lot easier when we are involved in one another's life rather than for somebody to run up there and think, well, pastor, you're supposed to be praying for me. I barely know you. I don't know you well other than Sunday morning and you've got this situation going on with your sister that I really know. I'm going to pray, but it isn't going to be the same thing as if I know you know you. I hope this doesn't get me in trouble, but I'm going to use it anyhow. Uh, Saturday, Sharon and I were coming home from my mom's house. And I'd say we're about halfway from Dayton, Virginia, and we're on our way home, and Sherry gets a telephone call. And I could tell on the telephone call that it was a very serious serious situation. And I could tell that it was cancer, and I could tell that it was not good. And I'm not going to mention any names, because I'm definitely not going to get in trouble by doing that. My wife doesn't know. She's usually not up here, so I can usually say whatever I want. But I can't this Sunday, because she's up here sitting in front of me. And then she made mention of one of the names of the spouse. And I'm telling you, I, I like died. I'm like, it can't be that person. It can't be. Well, I can tell you that it was a loved one. But I can also tell you that it wasn't the one that I thought that was in this congregation that I loved dearly and that I was just wondering how am I going to start ministering to this person because I'm with them and I know them and I love them and we're to emotionally submit to one another and that's the way that we do that by spending time with one another. I'm going to move on real quickly on the last two, and I'm going to close. Not because I'm going to skirt the issue, because I'm looking at the time. You guys have been gracious. But one of the ways that we're supposed to submit to one another is financially. We just are. That's how the church does things. That's how we do things. That's how we have things. 
Paul in Romans 12, 13 says that we are to contribute to the needs of the saints. Paul wrote to the church of Galatia, remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. Paul says, I set the example before you. Paul in Romans 15 says, tell the church to take up the collection in order to spread the gospel to the end of the earth. And in five separate locations, it says that one of the reasons that we, sub- we financially submit to one another is in order to pay your pastor. The sixth thing is that we're to spiritually submit to one another. The Bible regularly focuses on us as God's children being planted in a local body, being eager and willing to share our spiritual giftedness with one another for the, for the proclamation of the gospel. And this is where I wanted you to turn in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read through seven verses. I'm going to start in verse 7. And this is the mutually sharing or the mutual submission of spiritual gifts and God's word says to each is, verse 7, to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For to the one is given through the spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing by, the, by one spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by the, by, one, by the one and the same Spirit who apportions to each individually as he wills, for just as, the, for just as the, bo- just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and frees. We are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member but of many. And if you think that he's talking about the universal church, you've lost your cotton pick in mind. He's talking about the local congregation on how God gifts us to be able to move us where he has planted us to proclaim the gospel. It just is. It just is. This is a local body at Corinth, but it's a universal principle that goes out to all local congregations. And I'm going to close with this, and I'll be short town. As Americans, it's not in our DNA to submit. It's just not. But when Christ comes within us, he changes our DNA. He gives us the ability to be humble and to be that shining city that is set on a hill. We are to shine so brightly that others can't help but to look in our direction and wonder what it is that we have that the rest of the world doesn't have. I want to ask you this question. Do you have a problem? Do you have an a issue with this message? I don't think the issue's with me. You know that I love you. The issue's got to be with God and God's word because this is what God's word says. This is what we're supposed to do. So this morning, as Brother Town plays us a song of invitation, I want you to pray that God would help you to be able to submit to his word, to submit to one another to help the local church move forward in the direction of sharing the gospel of Christ. Please stand if you're able. Jealous as I am without one plea, but
please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, and we, sorry, we pray that we will not just profess faith in Christ, but that we will possess it. And as your word says, and how do Christians show that they are Christians against the backdrop of the darkness of this world? They love one another. And I pray that we will show that by submitting to one another, loving each other, and being a part of each other's family. And as the pastor said, that we will all get off the sidelines and get in the game. And we pray this by the power of Christ and Christ alone. Amen. And our closing song before we go downstairs and enjoy it together uh, will be the chorus of Christ the Solid Rock. Bless the food real quick. Let's bow our heads one more time. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together in celebration of Brother Clayton and all of his service to us. Uh, he's a great example to us. Please bless the food to our bodies and bless the hands that prepared it and just bless the time and fellowship. In your name we pray. Amen. See you downstairs. <laughs>